Hi students, welcome to the Baiju's Hindu News Analysis for 5th of August 2018. So let's get started. So let's look into the first article. So the first article says frequent digital media use increases the risks of ADHD. So what exactly is ADHD standing for? It stands for the Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. So we will be looking in detail about this Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. So first let's understand what exactly the context is. So when you look into the context, what you will realize is there was one of the research papers that was published in the journal of the American Medical Association which is actually revealed frequent digital media use appeared to increase the risk of having symptoms of ADHD by about 10%. So first thing that we need to understand is what are the likely problems that may appear because of overuse of smartphones, because of overuse of social media and how is that it is going to disturb a particular person or an individual at the terms of health hazards, at the terms of psychological hazards and at the times of what are these symptoms is what we will have to understand with respect to this article. First let us try to understand what exactly would be the likely problems. So off late what we realize is number of students especially those in the age group of about 16 years to 18 years and after that start using the smartphones. So because they are almost addicted to use of smartphones phones and also the social media in terms of the Facebook, the Twitter, the YouTube and all these apps that they have and they are using these apps, what would happen is this would result in the poor performance in terms of their markings, in terms of how they are working out in schools and in terms of how they are working out in colleges and what this will lead is their marks will be less and this can impact their education. That's the first point that we need to understand. So overall this will lead to poor school performance of all those students who are addicted to Facebook and other things. The next thing that we need to understand is these people can actually suffer a lot of depression or these people may also get into trouble uh, when all these people who are actually socially isolated so they'll have thousands and thousands of friends in Facebook but when you consume this at the lower level what they are ha having is the social alienation because all the time addiction and different number of people putting up different types of comments all these things make a particular person go socially active but personally inactive so what this will result is in depression because these people are not adequate enough to actually handle all the pressures that come their way due to their age restraints because they do not have experience with them as to how to isolate the social relationship as well as the personal relationship and because they are not able to segment the social and the personal relationship what they may face through is the depression and this depression can be a psychological impediment for their lives and the next thing that we will have to understand is these people are also at the risk of substance abuse and legal problems so what do we mean by it it means because they they have certain types of depression because they are going through this depression in a very psychological way these people can get addicted to drugs or they start smoking or they start drinking and they may get into bad temporal moments and because they get into all these bad tempers what may result is legal problems in terms of drink and drive or use of abusive substances and all these will be a problem. So another important and the most important fact is these people will have a lot of issues with respect to the insomnia and fragmented sleep. You would have understood right a number of times you would have that urge to actually look into your smartphones to see if any of your friends have actually messaged you on WhatsApp or is there any new video that is actually released because of the subscriber list that you have on the YouTube. So this will have insomnia that is there is no proper sleep structure and because of this no proper sleep structure what you will feel is the lethargy in your work. So because there is lethargy laziness the entire day that you actually are supposed to be active what will result is an inactive movement of your social life. Another important point is this was also leading to about 30% of the parent-child conflicts. So what exactly are the possible symptoms? So when you look into number of symptoms, the number of it can take an epidemic shape resulting in blackberry thumb, cell phone elbow or something called as nomophobia. So what exactly is the nomophobia? So you have the phone with you but because there is no network, because there is no battery access and because you're not able to access the phone, you sense a kind of fear in yourself and that 
that is called as nomophobia and the most important is the ring anxiety so what exactly is ring anxiety so sometimes you would have kept your phone somewhere and you would be active on some working and immediately you realize that there is a ringtone that is buzzing or there is a vibration that is buzzing from your phone but instead there is no ring that is coming up or there is no message that has vibrated but you actually sense it so this is called as the ring anxiety so all these are the major symptoms and apart from that what we have is the inactiveness which is being distracted having difficulty getting organized and remembering to do things then there is hyperactivity having difficulty stealing sitting still and then there is impulsivity which is making decisions without thinking through the possible consequences so all these symptoms have to be understood so what exactly are the control measures so these are all the important problems that any person is actually going through how is that i can stay away from this how is that we are not supposed to get addicted to all these things instead we should channelize our energy towards achieving what is important from the personal level and at the social level rather than concentrating and getting depressed on all these alienating topics so what exactly are the control measures so when you look into the control measures what the control measures actually gives is imposing an electronic curfew which means not using any gadgets 30 minutes before sleep and this can also be implemented immediately after you get up so we have the tendency to look at the phone immediately as soon as we are awake and right so this should not be done so make sure that you have a particular duration of time where you're not using your cell phones any time before bed or after you have woken up from the sleep and next thing it says is take a facebook holiday for 7 days every 3 months avoid use of social media once a week for entire day use your mobile phones only when mobile so only when it is required is when you use your mobile phones this should not be an urge or a tendency or an addiction to get to a mobile phone but instead use it at the minimal level when you are doing some business work on your business work on your work and instead don't focus on your mobile phones limit your mobile talk time not to more than 2 hours in a day use your mobile phones only when it is a necessity don't have an urge to actually continue going on speaking hours after hours which usually majority of the people do which is not going to sense anything instead meet up people have a coordinated relationship smile laugh and all these things is what makes your day happy instead of speaking on phone for hours and hours and this because of the satellite signals has also proved sometimes it is going to be dangerous as well do not use computer for more than 3 hours a day this is kind of tough but try using this as much as possible do not recharge your mobile battery once more than a day so all these are the control measures so what exactly would be the conclusion bit so when you can understand the conclusion bit what we need to understand is in this digital era the key to good health should be moderation moderate use of technology most of us have become the slaves to the devices that were really meant to free us and give us more time to experience life and spend time with the people so the whole idea is mobile phones were an instrument which is actually making people close together but this should not alienate people so the whole idea of the mobile technology or the social media is to express ourselves rather than to inhibit ourselves this should not be an impediment in our lives this should what be an expression of our life this should be something where we are focusing more on how it is enlarging the vacuum that is there in our lives rather than this itself creating a vacuum in our life so make sure whatever digital era that is being advanced to in order to bridge all these lacunas that are there is instead serving to move ahead in life rather than declining the way of life is what we need to understand from this article so moving on let's look into the next article so the next article says latin america seeks more missions so what exactly is the context so india had made a particular promise way back in 2013 2010 that it will actually open up three embassies in latin american countries is this was actually made by dr shashi tharoor who was actually a minister of state for external affairs in the ups ministry who actually said that in the regions of dominican republic ecuador and uruguay we will be opening up our missions that is the embassies however what needs to be understood is that we have not opened the embassies or the consulates in these countries but at the same time these countries have already opened diplomatic missions in india but india has not reciprocated the gesture and at the same time what we also need to understand is india does not have missions in uruguay paraguay bolivia ecuador costa rica el salvador though these countries have the missions in india why exactly is this being focused the prime reason as why this is being focused is because modi recently visited 
Africa and when Prime Minister Modi visited Africa he did say that he would open almost 18 embassies on the continent by 2021 so this was a promise made by Prime Minister Narendra Modi however what we need to realize is there were already promises that were established by the previous government that is the UPA government but why is the mission not being accomplished is what the key article all about so on the analysis perspective we need to understand two fronts is embassy or a consulate important from the country's perspective or is it not important if it is important why is it important if it is not important why is it not important so let's try and understand everything with respect to the analysis perspective with respect to the adoption of embassy in other country so the first point that we need to understand is is embassy important some of the arguments that we need to understand is that embassy is not important why let us try to understand why it is not important one of the major impediment or problem is with respect to the cost factor so what do we mean by it let's say for example what an embassy means is you need a number of ambassadors you need a supporting staff and at the same time what you need is a security team so these security team has to take care of all these people then you'll need the infrastructure so all these things have to be provided in case an embassy has to be established in another country so what this directly means is I'll have to provide the salary to the security personnel I'll have to provide the salaries to the ambassadors as well as all the security personnel and for the infrastructural development so what it indirectly means is that we will have to put in a lot of efforts in order to create and establish the embassy so this means the cost is going to increase so in order to reduce the cost we do not require the embassy is the first argument so all these establishment and sustenance of these things will require money so first of all we do not have money with respect to all these things because we do not have so much of engagement with all these countries so because we do not have so much of engagement with all these countries what we need to understand is we do not require embassy why because the cost is too much and because in order to avoid the cost what we are doing is we are reducing the cost that we are enforcing in all these domains that is why we do not require embassy so the first point is cost is gonna increase and that is why we are decreasing this particular process why the simple reason that we will have to understand is next thing is the ICT so with the improvement of the internet and the communication technology what we would be able to adapt is in case there is an issue in case there is a problem area that we see in a particular country let's say for example in this particular case we do not have embassies in majority of the country that is Dominican Republic or say for example Paraguay and so on so what can actually be done is in case there is a particular person or say for example the diaspora who are actually facing the issue what exactly can happen is we have the cellular phones right now we have the emails right now we have the video conferencing technology which will actually enable anyone to get interconnected immediately so in that way what we can actually do is in terms of the internet and the communication technology what the presidents or the prime ministers would be able to do is they'll be able to conversate with the members in the other country so we do not have to require the embassy or another point like the diplomats establishment in this particular country why the simple reason is there is this information communication technology that is already established and because of this in case there is an urgency or something of an important issue so all these things can be addressed because of the ICT is another important argument and the third thing that we need to understand is the establishment of the special envoys so what do we mean by it so let's say for example there is an issue so this cannot be connected by the ICT ICT. so it needs the physical presence so what can exactly happen is anywhere in the world we are able to connect within 24 hours with by the airlines so what we can actually do is we will have certain special envoys in the Ministry of External Affairs so in case the ICT is not able to open up this particular area what we will do is we will immediately send a special envoy so we will have a set of people or a a group of people who are called as special envoys who are actually in the Ministry of External Affairs through the airlines that is within 24 hours we will be able to reach that particular country see what exactly is the problem solve that particular crisis or an issue of which is of emergency within a particular duration of time finish that particular urgent matter and then return back so we don't require the embassy is another point why because in case there is a problem area these special envoys that are there in the Ministry of External Affairs will go there 
for see what exactly the problem is understand the problem finish off the what exactly is the problem is and provide them the solutions and then after clearing this particular problem i'm coming back to india so we have special envoys and that is why we do not require the embassy is another point of the argument and the most important argument that we will have to understand is that there are always indian diaspora and something called as the local contacts so make sure that all these contacts that you have get the sources from these local contacts establish credentials with these people and then get all the data information news that you want to electronically so in case you are able to get this why do you need the embassy is the point that we will have to understand so all these arguments make sure that the embassy is not required and that is why embassy need not be established is the point that we will have to understand so all these arguments says that embassy establishment by india in another country is not required but what we will also have to understand is the other side and when you look into the other side what we will have to understand is that embassy is required so what exactly does it say first let us try to understand something with respect to the statistics so in the year 2016 and 17 india exported more to mexico than to neighbors such as thailand myanmar and iran on traditional trade partners like russia and canada so what do you see the numbers that is the mexico is at about 3.5 billion while even russia and canada the exports is comparatively at a very smaller rate at the same time india's trade with dominican republic was more than the trade with portugal Greece and some other European countries. India even beat China in export of pharmaceuticals to Latin America. India's exports were 651 million in comparison to China's 404 million in 2016. In fact, in the last five years, India has been exporting more pharma to Latin America than China. So, because India advances all these things in terms of the export, and this requires interpersonal skills, this requires negotiation, and this requires people at the ground reality so all these things can be established only when we have an embassy only when we have an consulate only when we have trade commissioners who are actually working about to bring about a developmental model all these exports could not have been established because there was no consulate or a no embassy but this can be established more and further upgraded only when we have a embassy and the consulate and at the same time we will also have to understand one to do with pacific alliance also called as alianza de pacifico so what is it it is a latin american trade block which is formed by chile colombia mexico and peru so kindly remember these four names this can be a potential question in your prelims question so who are the four members of the pacific alliance it is chile colombia mexico and peru which all border the pacific ocean these countries actually came up together to form an area of integration with the purpose of ensuring a complete freedom in the movement of goods services capital and people so they came up together in order to form a structure so that they are able to have a free movement in in terms of the people capital goods and services to enlarge the economy so what we need to understand with respect to this is india has already got a observer status so india has already got a observer status with respect to the pacific alliance and now because india has got a pacific alliance observer status what we need to understand is we would be able to understand how exactly the study is happening with respect to the elino so we know for the fact elino is one of the major Hell, weather patterns that is disturbing the agricultural pattern in India because there is lot of weather patterns that is disturbing because of El Nino. What India would be able to do is India would be able to understand the impact of El Nino and how it can be approached and how it can be actually working about with respect to El Nino in relationship with all these countries because India has got the observer status and because all these countries are also part of that El Nino weather pattern, India would be having better understanding. standing with respect to all these weather patterns and india would be able to come up with a particular approach to address the issues of el nino and for this you need the ground reality and for this you need the embassy only when you have this embassy you will be able to speak to them directly every now and then and we would be able to understand the concurrent facts in order to approach this el nino and that is why we need an embassy with respect to the pacific alliance and that is in the latin american countries another important point that we need to understand 
understand this. We already looked into the number of exports that India is doing with respect to all these Latin American countries. And what we will also have to realize, in case we do have the trade commissioners, in case we do have the embassy, what we would be able to do is we would be exporting a number of things. Let's say, for example, India's small and medium entrepreneurs can also be ma making use of this particular program and what we will also be able to do is trade facilitation can be increased the science and technology research can be also advanced in these domains so if India has got the observer status and India is able to understand the weather patterns with all these countries India is also able to export in terms of the small and medium term entrepreneurs and we are able to establish more trade exploitation and at the same time we would be also able to establish a bridge between the science and technology by using the space mission by using the defense mission and also enlarging all these IT services that we can provide to the Pacific Alliance countries at the same time what we also need to understand is China is not keeping quiet as we had discussed recently with respect to Africa China is also increasing its investment in terms of the Latin America so what is the most important point is how is that we are also enlarging our space with respect to Latin America. Let's try and understand what the fact says. It says Indian FDI is largely fueled by supply and demand on private companies but in Chinese one is mostly led by the government one. So because Chinese are doing it by the government one why should we stand back even we can enforce all that we have from the Indian government side and the Indian government should also do it and for this we need the embassy in India while China is trying to establish from its government side we have it only from the private companies why should we hold back even we can do it and that is why India needs to establish the embassy at the same time India's FDA goes mostly to the developed world and to the manufacturing and the services whereas Chinese FDA is mainly geared up towards the developing countries and mining when Chinese are doing this why is that we are restricting only ourselves to the developed countries why not open paradigms with respect to the developing countries of Africa as well as Latin America why should we hold back is the second question and at the same time India's comparative advantage lie in its corporate governance and management whereas China's area is government strategy and economic diplomacy when they are able to do it in terms of active government involvement in all these things why is that India is not doing in case India has to open up all these fronts then the government engagement is more important and for this what we need is the government and also the most important point is in case India has to get FDI or India has to push in its all its private companies to another country, FDI becomes the most important part and for all this government support is the most important thing for the government support we need the establishment of the embassy is another important argument that we need to understand so as a whole what we need to understand is we need more of the government initiatives and at the same time private ventures and more diplomatic engagements so basically establishment of the embassy is more important what it is not only about security the cost and other things it is basically a meaning of understanding between two countries it is saying that these countries that we are standing by you it is a clear sign of the host government that is India in this particular case to actually say that we are going to hold you back we are going to enlarge this bilateral relationship and we mean business with respect to diplomacy and that is why we need embassy is the whole argument all about so as a conclusion bit it is not only about symbolism it is about more about deepening the whole concept of bilateral relationship so this is all we will have to understand from this so the next article speaks about the Kailas temple so the first thing that we need to understand with respect to this is this construction of the temple actually started during the Rastakuta king that is during Danti Durga's period but majority of the work that happened was after Danti Durga that is by Krishna so two important points is Rastakuta then the kings of Danti Durga and Krishna who actually started off with this particular construction so what we need to understand is where exactly is it located so it is located located in Elora in Maharashtra so this is something to do with your prelims perspective so now let's try and understand something to do with the facts so there are 32 caves in Elora and this particular temple is about cave 16 so the cave 16 is occupied by the Kailasa temple so kindly remember the cave 16 so cave 16 is to do with Kailasa temple because there are 32 caves in Elora so temples 1 to 2 in the southern side are the Buddhist caves then we have temple 
13 to 29 which are the hindu caves and in the northern side is we have the jain temples so kindly remember all these important facts that can actually pop up for your prelims question and moving on what exactly are the features so when we look into the features what we will realize is the carving of the temple started from the top of the mountain so what do we mean by it so in case you look at all the caves right you have the front start that you have so you have the front area of a mountain temple so any construction or for that matter any carving that happens happens from the front side but this is the only temple in the whole world where the carving is happened from the top so chunks and chunks of rocks that were there in the form of a mountain were actually removed so what we should be proud of is that we have an indian civilization which is actually got the highest rate of architecture which is nowhere there in any of the parts of the world this is the only temple where there is vertical excavation that has happened and no other temple has actually been constructed like this because usually when any construction happens it is on the front side so we happen to go through and cut that particular cave in the form of a frontal movement but this is the only temple where the whole mountain and this happened in the form of vertical excavation and that is why this temple becomes one of the most important things and what further goes on to give about certain facts and it says that a pit was later dug around the temple on the sloping side of the hill about 106 feet deep at the innermost and at the same time there are other features which say about the gopura the main temple has a sabagraha vestibules and the nandi mantap which leads to a garbagraha that is the sanctum which actually has a shivalinga so this kailasa means it is a temple of shiva so it has a shivalinga which profusely carved and with asian shikaras and a bridge connects the nandi mantap to the gopuram and what we will also have to understand is that there is also a cultural link and this cultural link is that there are many beautiful carvings of durga mahishasura mardini gajalakshmi seated in a lotus pool shiva as ardhanari and also veerabhadra ravana shaking the kailas parvat and also mahabharata and ramayan panels so the ramayan panels are also there and at the same time there are about five detached things and that is to do with the river goddess of ganga yamuna saraswati and a yagna shal which is actually a hall of service so what we need to understand is basically from the prelims perspective so kindly make sure all these facts you remember so this is all to do with this article so moving on let's look into the next article so the next article is to do with the black book so again this is important from the factual information that is from the prelims perspective so the iucn status for black bug is near threatened so black bug the antelope cervic pra is a large species of antelope native to the indian continent so it is there in the regions of maharashtra odisha punjab haryana gujarat andhra pradesh tamil nadu karnataka with a few pockets of central india they are found in nepal and pakistan to apart from india they are the state animal of haryana and punjab kindly remember this factual information so the black buck is the only living species of the genus antelope only males have horns that are diverging cylindrical spherical and the ring throughout as you can see it from this particular thing so in india hunting of black bucks is prohibited under the wildlife protection act of 1972 black buck shows sexual dimorphism so all you will have to understand is this particular fact this can also be a potential question in your prelims perspective so one of the most important things is with respect to the state animal of haryana and punjab and also that it is iucn status is near threatened so moving on let's look into the next article so the next article is to do with portuguese man of war so what exactly is it this uh, marine organism is also commonly called as the blue bottle or the floating terror so this is the other names that you can actually look into so what exactly is the details so one of the major important points is its iucn status so its iucn status is least concern so this you will have to remember so what exactly is the issue area so when we look into the issue area what exactly happens is most jellyfish things are actually harmless to the humans and cause only a mild irritation however the blue bottle are venomous and can cause harm on contact even a dead blue bottle washed up on shore can deliver a sting said the advisories to tourists so they have actually asked the tourists not to go to this particular area 
so what exactly is the first aid so when we look into the first aid what it will actually have is that including washing the sting with the hot water or using the vinegar or also using the ice packs can actually relieve us of some pain so this is all we will have to understand from this article so please visit the Baiju CNA look into the practice questions both prelims as well as mains and then please write all your answers on the comment section so that we can evaluate and give you the relevant feedback for the same so this is it for today thank you so much all the best